All right, so the quality of this video might not be that great because uh, I'm shooting it with my phone, but I didn't want to risk having to wait to go in the house to get the camera. But you see the truck is running. I just started it to move it. Tachometer is not working. I've got my wires hooked up, and I'm measuring 5.15 volts, which is pretty much exactly what it was measuring when it was working. What happened was I hadn't used the truck in a while. I used the truck yesterday. I drove it for a couple of miles without any problems, and then on the way back to the house, it started acting up like crazy. It was throwing the check engine light. Tack was kicking in and out, kicking in and out. It was acting up like, like bonkers. So I pulled into the driveway, literally went to get my meter to hook it up, and by the time I came back, the tack was working and everything was working normal again. I even took it for another drive for a couple of miles, and it still was working perfectly. It's the most nerve-wracking, intermittent problem I've ever dealt with. So, back in the days when I used to do TV repair, I would call this a tough dog. A tough dog was that uh, now you see it, now you know an intermittent problem. That you know you think you got the you think you got the problem licked, and then you put it on the test bench, and while it's running, it fails again. Or worse yet, gets back to the customer's home and fails. So, now it's consistently not working. That's actually good. So I'm getting, again, voltage there. So this is hooked up. I got it grounded. And this goes to this purple wire that runs all the way underneath the cab and is spliced in up near where the connector going to the sensor is. So, what I would love to do now if I thought that I could pull it off would be to actually tap into the wire that the, uh, the connection where the pulse coming out of the sensor should be right now somewhere up near the, um, what do they call it? It's not the, uh, it's not the engine control. Powertrain the PCU, the powertrain control unit. It's been so long since I worked on this thing, I forgot the, the lingo. The powertrain control unit is up there on the uh, firewall. So, just out of curiosity, if I... Yeah, see, it's not working. And also, the charger's not charging. Boy, this is the deadest it's been in a while. Well, the uh, tachometer started working and then it was working pretty steady again within minutes after uh, that last recording, at which point I was trying to do some other testing. Um, I had inadvertently realized that I forgot that I had run a ground wire or the sensor ground wire from near the sensor. I had run an auxiliary wire like this and it was here in the door jam. And I had forgotten. So I've been using the ground inside the chassis here to check for that 5 volts. The problem with that is if that sensor ground lifts, then because I'm using chassis ground in the truck, I would still see the 5 volts there. So what I really wanted to do, what I should have been doing, is I should have been monitoring the 5 volts at that sensor plug via these two wires, the, the, the hot wire and the ground wire. So now, when I hook the negative lead of the meter up to this, I get 5 volts, but that's because it's working again. So what I need to do is I need to, I need to have it fail again and hook my meter up correctly. And if that works, then I can rule out a ground that's lifting. In other words, if, if there's a ground connection that's bad somewhere that's causing this whole problem... What would happen is I should actually see the meter reading change. So if the 5 volts is there when I use the ground inside the vehicle, but the 5 volts isn't there when I use the sensor ground, that would mean that I've got a ground lifting somewhere because that goes into a wiring harness and God knows where it goes. Well, it's been a couple of days and I was just uh, starting the truck to move the trailer and it's acting up again, so now I get a chance to measure the voltage exactly where I wanted to measure it. So I'm measuring 
I've got the positive lead in the meter on the wire that goes to the five volt connection. Oh, you see that? Look at that. Oh, here it just went out. All right, I better do this quick. It's on again. It's, yeah, it's off again. Here, hold that. So I'm putting a negative lead in the meter on the sensor ground wire. So my son's gonna put the lead on there. There we go, so 5.15 volts showing and it's not working. So what that tells me is that it doesn't look like the sensor ground is the issue and it doesn't look like the five volt supply is the issue. So I know I have what appears to be a good sensor ground and 5 volt supply up to that connector that goes down to the sensor. So either the sensor is intermittent in my whole problem or there's a problem with the signal coming out of the sensor not making it back to the uh, drivetrain control module or the module itself is a problem. So I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. Up and down. Attack. It was just going up and down. Yeah. All right. So I've determined that when I had the uh, temporary wire hooked up to this five volt supply line, that whether the tack was working or not working, I had five volts up to this point. Uh, I also determined that the sensor ground wire, which is this one, seemed to be working okay or normally. So it didn't seem to be a problem with the ground and it didn't seem to be a problem with the 5 volt supply. There's only one other wire coming from the sensor. That's this wire here that the actual pulse that the sensor generates when the engine's running uh, travels back to the um, powertrain control module. So what I'm going to do now is I remove I cut the temporary 5 volt line off because I don't need that anymore I'm gonna splice into this line I would love to put a scope on this to actually look at the pulse but I really don't have time to set up my big scope out here and with my luck the darn thing will be working so much so I mean it's been going through this where it'll work for a long time but lately every time I've started it for the past four or five starts the tack has not been working I don't know if it's died completely now. Uh, if the you know the problem, whatever whatever is bad, has just gone completely bad, or whether or not it's just in its intermittent phase again. I'm hoping that when I start it, it won't be working, and that it will start working at some point during the testing, so that I can look at what's on this line with a voltmeter. Now, question is, how do I look at a pulse with a voltmeter? Well, the pulse should look like an AC signal or an AC waveform to the meter. So what I expect to see is I expect to see, uh, if I put my meter on AC voltage, I expect to see a small AC voltage or what will look like a small AC voltage on this line. And then I expect to see it disappear when the tack stops working if I'm losing that pulse from the sensor. All right. So I'm all connected up and I got the meter connected in the truck. So right now the meter is showing uh, 0.8 millivolts AC. That's with the truck key off, truck not running. All right, so that actually drops, oh no, that comes up to about one and a half millivolts, truck not running. Tachometer's not working. I find that a little disconcerting that there's something there. I was really hoping there'd be nothing there while the tack was not working. It's 233.6 millivolts. Notice this little indicator back here moving back and forth. That almost indicates that there's like a pulsation there that it's seeing. I'm wondering if that voltage will change as I change RPMs. does so my problem is I don't know if that's a normal level what I need is I need to be able to monitor this voltage and compare it to that reading when the tack starts working if when the tachometer starts working 
that voltage increases by quite a bit, then I would say, yeah, bad sensor. However, if the tack starts working and that voltage stays the same and nothing changes, that's going to lead me back to thinking that either A, the signal's not making it all the way back to the powertrain control module, the PCU, or the PCU itself is faulty, or there's something else I didn't even think of wrong, which is disconcerting. Well, I got some bad news for myself. Uh, I stopped to get fuel, I just got back in the truck and started it, and the tachometer is working. What bothers me is no change at the voltmeter. Alright guys, so I just arrived back home from getting fuel. The tachometer did not stop working or flutter and the dash lights did not come on and off at all the whole trip. Again, we're still ignoring this ABS light, that's a separate issue. But, here's the thing. I still have serious doubts as to whether or not it might not, in fact, actually be the sensor that's bad. So here's, the, here's my point. Just because there's 230 millivolts there when I start the truck does not mean that there's a pulse there. You know? I mean, it could very well be some sort of a digital pulse that the meter wouldn't be able to see anyways, and maybe that's just normal for the 230 volts to be there. Maybe that's even coming out of powertrain control module. I think at this point I'm gonna break down and I'm gonna buy a replacement sensor. So that'll come in, we'll put that in, and it may take some driving. Who knows? Might put the new sensor in, might go to start it, and it might have no tack right off the bat, and then we'll know, whoops, okay, there's a hundred dollar guess that didn't work out. This is you know this is gonna be a tough one. No doubt about it. Alright, so uh today is June first and um Last weekend was Memorial Day weekend and we went camping, towed the trailer with the camper. For the majority of the time that we were uh, on the road with this truck, uh, it did not act up. But it did act up uh, a few times on and off, but didn't stay, the tachometer didn't stay um, non-working for a long period of time. So the last thing I had decided was that uh, I was just going to bite the bullet and buy the sensor and see. So. This is what I ended up getting from Rock Auto. Uh, Rock Auto had the best price I could find on this. There were three sensors that came up as possibilities for this truck. This is the, again, a 97 3500 one ton four wheel drive, 5.9 liter turbo diesel Cummins. And one of them was very cheap. It was like under 50 bucks, but it said that that sensor was for manual transmission models. So that one was out. Then there was this one, made by this company standard okay and this uh, PC 260 sensor from standard was about 95 bucks and so with tax um, and shipping it came to just a little over a hundred dollars there was another choice I forgot who the manufacturer of that was oh the manufacturer of that one was NGK and the NGK sensor was like 140 bucks with shipping it probably shipping and tax it probably would have been about 150 dollars for that sensor and the NGK sensor had a 60-day warranty this one has a 36 month 36,000 mile warranty so I went with the cheaper one so we're gonna install it the truck hasn't been started or driven uh, for several days it has been in the habit of not working when I first start it so I'm not gonna start it I'm just gonna put the sensor in and then start it because if it acts up right away again then I know my sensor wasn't the answer unfortunately it means I just blew a hundred bucks if it does seem to work right away uh, then the verdict will still be out because of this highly intermittent problem we have. It's going to take a while of driving it before I am convinced that it is resolved. 
So this is the plug right here that's going to have to be changed. Okay, not changed, uh, disconnected. And that plug actually is mounted to a bracket right there. Then there is a plastic sleeve. It goes through a bracket right down in here. It's around the wiring harness. Then it goes down. So there's the sensor right there. So you can just see the top of the back of the sensor and one of the bolts. I'm sorry, one of the nuts. It's threaded stud right there. And then the other one you can't quite see because this pulley's in the way. So we're going to unbolt that. All right, so I've got the sensor unbolted right now. And the wire, the cable assembly, actually goes under this belt, the serpentine belt, and comes up on this side of it. So you can either try and pass this bulky sensor, okay, underneath there and behind the belt, which is kind of a tight fit. You could probably do it. But I think it's a lot easier to probably just pass the whole end of this cable now that I undid this little retainer right here this was a 10 millimeter nut um, 10 millimeter bolt and judging by the length of the bolt it's actually probably part of this cover uh, there's a front cover here assembly it covers I believe the timing gears so anyways so all I got left to do really is disconnect the cable here now the one end of the cable the end of the the end of the plug or connector sorry the end of the connector that actually has the wires going to the sensor attached to it actually is mounted to a uh, plastic uh, to a, a bracket. There's a hole, and it's tricky to get off, but you can actually just break it off because it's one of these things. Okay, see the you know the accordion deals. So you push it in through the hole, and once it's pushed through, those things flare out. So it would be kind of difficult for me to get that to collapse and pull it out and have it actually survive. But since I've got the brand new one here, I'm just going to break that off. So I'm going to get a screwdriver so I can put some force on that. Connector unplugs pretty easily. So let me get a uh, screwdriver to pry that. So that's the thin metal bracket that that thing clicks into. So you kind of want to get something in between the bottom of the connector in the top of this bracket to pry instead of just trying to wrench up on the whole thing because you might bend that all to hell. All right now I got the old sensor out and lay out the new sensor right next to it just to make sure that it's a good match and sure looks like it is. This can slide along this cable so if I have to reposition that that's no problem but the sensor ends definitely look identical. Plugs are already I already checked the plugs. The plugs are identical, so it looks like it's a good, it's a good match. I'd love to see a crack or something in the housing on this thing, because then that would indicate that you know maybe moisture has gotten inside of it and could be raising heck with the thing. So we'll clean that up and look at it later. Let's get the new one in. So definitely the way to go was to uh, to feed the plug and let the, the plug fall down and come out through the serpentine belt. So out through the bottom is what I'm trying to say. So to put this in, we're going to just do the opposite. Going to go in through the bottom, up behind that serpentine belt, and up to the top. All right, guys. So I just looked up online. I was looking for the spec. You gotta send an air you have to set an air gap between the end of the sensor here and the actual harmonic balancer. There's actually even some scraping on here to indicate that at some point that it did actually rub this. Um, the end of this sensor is magnetic. You you're supposed to use a non-metallic or a non-ferrous. So you could use brass shim stock or brass feeler gauges. Or plastic feeler gauges so I looked up online I found two locations where people said 50 thousandths was the magic number then I found one guy who specifically said 0.049 to 0.051 that's 49 to 51 thousandths I got a feeling like that's probably right out of a manual and everybody's just taking the 49 to 51 and saying hey what's the middle 50 
So I think 50 thousandths is our magic number. So what do I do? Well, I got plenty of metal feel of gauges, but we want a non-metallic feel of gauge. Some guys say use a matchbook cover. Well, whenever I see that, I always think, well, how critical is that dimension? Because matchbook cover to matchbook covers probably vary in thickness. They may vary a few thousandths. And if they if you're talking about a tolerance range of 49 to 51, then that could be troubling, maybe, right? I don't know. So, these are the flaps that I tore off of the box that the sensor came in. And lo and behold, if I measure one of these, <laughs> 25 thou. And the other one, 25 and a half thou. So we put 25 and 25 together. And I know I went to public school and everything. And actually, when you compress it down, and actually you would get about four, I well, see you get a little bit of variation in there. But we're around 50 thou with those two covers, those two flaps stacked together. So that's what I'm going with. One more word about before I do this. On the harmonic balancer, there's a notch. And the way that this pickup works is that pickup senses a change in the magnetic field as that notch passes the sensor. So you have to make sure that that notch is not right where the pickup is mounted. In other words, you want the solid part of the wheel, not the notched part of the wheel, for you to rest your, your gauge on. All right, there we go. Sensor's installed. Cable routes dangerously close to the underside of that serpentine belt there. Um, back up against the engine, up to the clamp that's held with a 10 millimeter bolt. Just kind of hard to see because of the elbow in the way here. That clamp right there is the one I'm referring to, which is held on by one of the bolts for the timing gear covers. And then we've got the plug fully seated. Ugh, kids. All right, we're ready for a test run. So a very slight delay for the tachometer to come up is normal because the sensor um, sends the signal to the um, powertrain control module, which is a, basically a dumb computer. And uh, then the computer outputs the signal to the tachometer. The tachometer does not get, get the pulse directly from the crankshaft sensor. So. Here goes nothing. Oops. Okay. So far, so good. Charging system is working. Now what was happening most recently would be that when I would start the engine, right off the bat, the tachometer wouldn't work, and then after a few seconds, it would start popping on and off, and then it would come on and, and work. Or it would fluctuate when the first you know minute or so, on, off, on, off. Right now, it's steady. That's a good sign. That means I'm not 100% sure that I'm wrong or right at this point. The only way to tell now is to drive it for a while. So uh, I think I mentioned this is June 1st, so I think I'll probably drive the truck during the week more than I usually drive it. It's not my every, it's not my daily driver, but maybe I'll make it my daily driver this week so that I can uh, keep an eye on things and see how it's going. All right, that's all I'm gonna do on this thing today. Oh, let's try it one more time while I'm sitting here. Seems okay. All right, it's day two. Oh, I have to say, this does look promising. <laughs> 